Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to create glowing text inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So to get things started, we'll start with the text plus title, which is about as basic as it gets without playing around too much in the Fusion Editor. So let's go up to the effects library and then look for titles, and inside of titles, above Fusion titles, you'll have text plus inside of there. So text plus is technically still a fusion title indicated by this little icon over here. And you can take your text plus title and still edit it inside of the fusion tab. But let's go ahead and take the text plus title and drop it onto our timeline. I'll also left click on the edge of the title to stretch and extend its length by pulling this out here. Left click and hold. So now we can see our base title pretty clearly there. And maybe we can change the text to say glow in the inspector or whatever you want it to be. Now there are a lot of options you can play around with any text plus title in the inspector. But to actually add a glow properly, we're going to want to go over to the fusion page to add in a special node that will give it the glow property. So on the fusion page and left click on the middle icon at the bottom to get there. Uh, you'll see that we have uh, the template on the left, which is just basically our text plus element. You can see that in the inspector, you can control the exact same settings as over on the edit page. But what we want to do is add the glow node between the template and the output. So to do that, right click, go to add tool, and then we can go to blur and then glow. So this glow element is going to sit between template and media out. So in order to make that happen, we need to left click on the right side of this line uh, right next to media out to disconnect the two nodes and then we left click on the gray box of template and bring that to glow one if this happens to say text one or text plus or anything it's it's the same thing just make sure it has the settings over here on the right and then we take the glow and we put that to media out so you'll notice somebody assuming that media out is previewing on this right preview window that uh, it now has a basic glow effect if for some reason you don't see this, then make sure by left clicking on media out that one of these two preview circles is enabled. So if you have a white circle on the left, it's going to appear over here on the left side. And if you have a white circle on the right, it's going to appear over here on the right side. So at this point, we could go to the edit tab and you could see it does in fact have a little bit of a text glow. So for this glow effect, let's go over here to the inspector, make sure you have glow selected, and we can talk a little bit about the settings over here. So uh, first off, you have the ability to select a different filter. Uh, by default, I believe it's on fast Gaussian. Now you might notice if you've ever used a blur effect that Gaussian blur is one of the options. So doing a glow is actually very similar to a blur, and that's why a lot of the option, and that's why a lot of the options in these filters are going to look the same. Now I myself don't know the exact technical difference between all of the filters, but if you click on the drop down menu, you can switch between a few different options and you may find that the filter effect that you're getting there is a little bit closer to what you actually want. So next up, we have the ability to enable the different channels or hide them. So red, green, blue, and alpha. If you hide a channel, it effectively turns off the output for that channel. So if you hide red, the glow is no longer going to be outputting any red light. So if you have green and blue enabled and the color scale down here, which you may have to actually expand by left clicking, uh, or set to 1.0, then you'd get something in between a green and a blue color. Likewise, you can turn multiple of them off. If you turn the alpha channel off, it's basically going to be setting it to full opacity there. But as you can see down here, we have the color scale options. So a better way of controlling that rather than hiding the channels entirely is actually going to be to just use these scroll bars. So if you want a little bit less red, you can take the red scale and tone that down. And that way you'll get something in between having it completely turned off and completely turned on. You can also exaggerate it by going above a 1.0 scale. So in this case, it would be really emphasizing the red light there. And you can just kind of play around with these scales to get the exact color of the glow that you're going to be going for. If you lower the alpha scale down, it's going to become a little bit more visible. And if you increase the alpha scale, the blur is going to be a little bit more hidden there. Which is a bit counterintuitive because usually if you lower the opacity down on other parts of DaVinci Resolve, it's actually going to be hiding the effect. But it seems to be kind of the opposite on this particular tool. So aside from that, we have two very important settings, glow size, which is going to control how far out you want the glow to go. So if we take the glow size and we increase it, uh, you'll see that it spreads out much further, but also that the glow itself is less focused. It's kind of more blurry. So if we 
decrease it to a very small glow size. It's almost like an outline of the text. But if we increase it very high, it looks very blurry like a background light and has very little to do with the object that's actually being glowed itself. We can also control the intensity of the glow. You could kind of think of it like the brightness. So if we increase the glow uh, closer to 1.0, it's going to very much exaggerate uh, the glow that's going around the text. And at 1.0, it just kind of completely overtakes the text, uh, almost like you were looking directly at the sun. And if we drop it to a lower setting, like 0 0.5 or 0 0.3, then the glow becomes very, very subtle. So you definitely want to kind of play around with these settings a bit to figure out exactly how much glow you're going to want for your title sequence. Note, note that if you've watched any of my other videos where I keyframe things, uh, you can actually keyframe the properties of these if you want to animate the glow size or the glow intensity over time as you create your title. So that's always one of the good things about DaVinci Resolve. Almost every property in the program is animatable, uh, which is really handy. The next property clipping mode is setting the boundaries of where the glow output should be. So generally, I think you're going to want to leave this as clipping mode frame so that the boundaries are the output of the video itself. So clipping at these edges where everything outside of it you can't see anyway. But there's also a uh, clipping mode domain. Uh, which is going to be basically clipping it to whatever the input is. So in this case, it's a title and the title has these text printing at these areas. So that's the domain, which means that the glow can't go any further out than that, which would probably look really bad for a title. So I don't think you're going to want to use that. And then clipping mode none would mean that there is no clipping. So if the glow happens to go outside of the video frame, it's still going to be accounted for inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now, I don't know if that directly impacts render performance or anything, having a glow that's outside of the video frame anyway. But I would think unless you have very special cases, uh, possibly with animating the glow effect, that clipping mode frame is going to work just fine because we only really care about what's actually being shown to the viewer anyway, right? So the next property, Blend, is basically telling the node how much of the glow effect do you want to push through to the output compared to the input. So in this case, the input is the template tax. So with a blend of 0 0.2, you're saying you want to take 20% of the glow and 80% of the tax and use that for the video output. So at a blend of zero, you would get no glow going through. It would only have the base template tax. And at a blend of 1.0, basically none of the text goes through, but the glow goes through with full intensity. So you'll probably want some setting in between there, especially if you want the text to be the focus. I think leaving it close to the 0.2 original value is going to be pretty good. Okay, now I do want to point out that there's actually another option for doing glows on the Fusion page. So if we disconnect glow to media out and template to glow, then we can add in a different type of glow. So if we right click, go to add tool, and then go down to resolve effects light, we can add glow in here, and we can connect the gray box to glow two, and glow two to media output, and we'll get a similar effect. Now there are some extra settings for this type of glow. For instance, you can control the horizontal vertical ratio if you want the glow to spread out left to right rather than top to bottom. So if we make the vertical ratio much more on the left side of a negative one, then you'll see that the glow only really goes top bottom. Uh, but generally, as with most things, you want it somewhere in between. There's also a setting here for the spread of the glow. So if you want the glow to go far out, way past the text itself, you can increase that. But uh, just like before, the further it spreads out, the blurrier it's going to get and the less visible it's going to be in a sense. So if you take the spread and you make it really low, then it's going to be really high intensity, but it's going to be sticking very close to the text itself. So with this glow tool, you can directly select the color you want it to be. So let's go ahead and grab a color for the glow value. But when you have the glow set up here, you can actually control the spread of each color inside of that glow uh, individually. So if I take the red spread and I increase that, then the red values that are being emitted by this color are going to spread out further. Now this will be a lot more visible when we have it set to white so that each of the colors are more equally assigned. So likewise, if I increase the spread green to a high value, then the green spreads out very far. And if I increase the spread blue, then the same thing kind of happens. And you can mix and match these. 
if you want the color to kind of shift a little bit as it moves out. So with this setup, having the spread red less than the spread blue, then it has like a purple intensity when it's really close to the text. Uh, but on the outer edges, it changes into more of a blue color. So this can be really cool if you actually want to have a multicolor glow, and it's much easier to do it with this effect than the first glow option. In this glow effect, we can control the opacity if you want to directly control the intensity. So if you want a very, very visible glow, you can bump the opacity up to something like 0 0.9. And now if we go check the edit tab, you'll see that this glowy text is very visible. Now because we have this all set up as a node sequence in the fusion tab, if we control the properties of the first node, the text plus element, it's going to affect everything else in the chain. So if I increase the size of the text on the first node here, like so, then that's also going to control the size of the glow because the glow is dependent on that text. So if we go back over to the edit tab now, we have that glowy text and it's going to be even more visible because the glow increased in size along with the text. So this is also going to apply to anything else I change about the text plus element as well. So if I decide to rotate it in 3D space, then the glow is also going to adjust and move alongside that. So at this point, it means that we can take our title and animate it to be something a bit more interesting as an intro or ending clip of your video. But now you have it with a cool glow effect. So as an example for what things can kind of look like, we can take a fusion title and drag it onto the timeline. So as an example, let's take title three line drop and put it onto the timeline here. So I'll zoom in a bit and we can kind of go through this title and take a look at it. So it's got like a cool animation already set up. And you can see rather than one text plus element, they're using three text plus elements. Um, and we could add a glow to one or all three of these text elements, which are already animated, which is which is something that you can do with keyframing. But if we want to add the glow to these text elements and save ourselves the time of completely making a full title, then let's go ahead and take this glow and move it over to this new title. So I'm going to go to the fusion page here and I'm just going to copy this glow node. So control C and I'm going to go over to the edit timeline. I'm going to left click where we have the new title. I'm going to left click on it to make sure it's selected. Go back over to the fusion page and you should see a title group here. Title three line drop. So we can open that up to see all of the nodes that go into making this title happen. I'm going to control V to paste in our glow. So now if we want to add this glow to one of these titles, we just need to move this glow in between each of these text elements and the merges for each one we want to add the glow to. I think if we take the whole group though, we might be able to add the glow to everything at once. So let's disconnect that output and see what happens if we connect the entire group into glow two and then media out. And you would actually get a glow around all of the text elements at once. So if you want to properly paste the glow effect into this title group, then what you should do is have it left clicked to create this white border around the group and then hit control V in order to paste it in. I noticed earlier that if you actually break apart the group and then you manually put the glow in and then reseal the group, then what might happen is that over on the edit page, these exposed properties for the title that's already been created uh, may no longer work. So in order to avoid that, instead of breaking apart this title group for a pre-made title, make sure that you paste the glow in properly by left clicking here and then control V to paste it in. Uh, you can also right click and add in new tools if you need to add anything extra to that group of nodes. But by doing that, then you'll still be able to change the properties on the edit page. So if I go here, how to make, then you'll notice that it still updates the fusion title here. So the properties that you change here are still reflected in the properties uh, on the fusion page. So you can see the how to make got here properly, which is what you want. So try not to break apart the group if you can help it. So that's pretty much going to be it for this tutorial on how you can make glowing text and titles inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. I hope that you guys found this tutorial helpful. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my future video content.